Welcome back to Health Matters. We are exploring various aspects of traditional Chinese medicine. I am joined by a doctor of traditional Chinese medicine, Zoran Jelisic, and registered massage therapist who also practices acupuncture, Li Su Hackett. Welcome back. So I want to uh, get into other treatments that you use, and I want to open up this dialogue with um, Dr. Oz. So I was watching his show once. He had three expert on. He had a medical doctor, a uh, lady for representing integrative medicine, and then he had an acupuncturist. He had a woman come up from the audience say she had lower back pain in her lumbar area from working out. So he asked the conventional doctor, what would you do? And he said, well, uh, as an MD, I would do a differential diagnosis, see if it, you know, something was wrong with the muscle spat, with the, with the muscles, or um, maybe there's something wrong with the nerves. I would send her for an MRI, and then maybe, you know, physiotherapy, anti-inflammatory, and then surgery. And Dr. Rose was like, okay, so let's go to the integrative uh, lady. What would you do? Well, we would do differential diagnosis. Um, then I'd probably send her for chiropractor and give her some botanicals such as valerian to relax the muscles. Then he turned to the acupuncturist and said, what would you do? And he said, well, I would do moxibustion. So he said, Dr. Oz said, well, what is that? So they grabbed a table, the lady lied down on her stomach, and the acupuncturist took a needle, started needling her back, and put these little uh, herbs on top of the needle, and the flames would, uh, the smoke would go into her body. And this is moxibustion. So different forms of uh, treatment. So why don't you explain moxibustion? Absolutely. So moxibustion is a, a herbal uh, treatment, thermal treatment in nature. We uh, we light up the, the moxa, which is Japanese name, by the way. Uh, Chinese name is aie, or we know it here in, um, as a mugwort uh, root. And this is how it looks. So this is actually a wool made out of the herb. And uh, this is usually formed, and uh, it's applied to acupuncture on top of it, where it's lighted up. So what's so special about this? Um, when moxa is lighted um, at the peak of the temperature, it emits particular uh, infra, uh, infrared frequency, which is uh, 2.6 nanometers. Mm -hmm. It seems like our tissue, human tissue, emits the same frequency. So we use moxa to tonify tissue, as we call it in Chinese medicine and acupuncture. Um, we will literally allow body to absorb this thermal uh, frequency and increases the local circulation, reduces the pain, and reduces the inflammation. Um, here we have a, um, a smokeless moxa. Since lots of people are um, not um, in tune with the smoke and, and, and the mm -hmm. odor of the moxa, we use odorless moxa, which is basically this powder that's pulverized. Because explain the smell, what it smells like. Well, um, it, it, it smells like as, as a burned herb. Um, and lots of people find this offensive, so then instead we use this one that doesn't smell, but it has the same application and same frequency. So for example, um, we would light this up, we would bring it to specific acupuncture points, uh, we would keep it about uh, three uh, inches um, away from the skin, uh, move it around the acupuncture point, move it in the next one, next one, so on, or we would just move it um, over the whole area so the body would soak up all this thermal energy. So in turn, this will increase the circulation, reduce the pain, and promote the anti-inflammatory effect. It's a very, very old method, as old as acupuncture. Interesting. I actually found a study, um, and actually Dr. Oz mentioned this, in the Journal of the American Medical Association found that up to 75% of women suffering from breech presentations before childbirth um, had the fetuses rotated as a result, um, from using uh, moxibustion. I mean, that's huge. It is. It is. Um, we use usually a specific point. One of them is uh, bladder 67. Um, Moxa again is brought close to about a couple inches away from the point, and we can see mm -hmm. an ultrasound how the fetus is turning. Yeah, yeah. I know when I've had the moxibustion on my back um, from from working out myself. I mean, it alleviates. It puts me back together. <laughs> so I really appreciate that. Let's move into the gua sha. So gua sha is instrument assisted. Uh, friction or scraping type of a therapy. So um, basically uh, what we do is uh, we would apply some of the medicated lotion which is herbal mm -hmm. in a nature to uh, soothe the skin, improve the circulation and then we would proceed by actually frictioning the area of the meridian or the area that it's um, um, affected by the uh, condition and the movements are um, unidirectional six to eight inches and um, once we get the redness or petechia or elevated uh, apart 
uh, we will move to the next area. Let's show the photo that we have of the redness on a person's back from um, the gua sha, from the scraping, so viewers at home can get an idea of what you're talking about um, with the redness. So there's the photo right now. And um, a study in a study in pain medicine demonstrated that gua sha decreased pain for chronic neck pain sufferers. So um, there's all this research coming out absolutely. for TCM. Um, and more and more uh, modalities in Chinese Can medicine are being, um, 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 being researched. So um, how would I use it? Like, let's say I had a cold or a flu, and I wanted to scrape my lung meridian. Okay. I mean, would I even do that? Uh, you could as a, as a self-care, you could yeah. also, um, so what would you do is you would find the lung meridian that starts from the shoulder and yeah. moves all the way to the big, uh, the same? Um, yes, and you would just se down? sequentially down oh. Six, oh, to six to eight <laughs> inches, of course. I'm going to take this home with me. <laughs> yeah, traditionally <laughs> what we've done, uh, growing up in a Chinese home, it's yeah. anytime you come home with a cold or a flu, you're just feeling under the weather. My mom would take out either, we, we used to use quarters, yeah. not the most comfortable tool to use. Oh, quarters, to porcelain scrape. spoon, and you would go along the, the channels on the back. I'm just going to demonstrate on the sure. if I could just borrow yeah. this. So just along uh, either side of the spine here, and we would just scrape along, again, preparing it with the oils, the heat, and so forth. You would just scrape sequentially all the way down the spine, uh, up until about halfway down towards the shoulder blade, just to help open up the entire channels of the bladder channel, because this is normally where we would feel a lot of the attack, we call it like the wind attack, when you first catch a cold. Everything mm -hmm. gets concentrated in the back of the neck, the, the base of the skull going all the way down. And that's when we often present with the fevers, the chills, sure. and, and so forth. And, and a lot of that, this will help expel it, so by the next day, you would actually feel a lot better. And this people can do this at home. Absolutely, but with caution. Okay. With caution. Which, okay. So, are the contraindications then? Let's, are there any? Absolutely. Um, contraindication would be um, open wounds, um, yeah. um, systemic infection, uh, uh, individual who's run down, um, decreased immune system, mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, any allergic reaction on the skin itself. Yeah. So in those cases, we wouldn't use it. In pregnancy, pregnancy, I'm sure that goes with moxibustion too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, lower avoid. back and uh, abdominal well, stomach area. Well, unless you're turning the baby for yes. the breech baby. Mm -hmm. um, okay, what about cupping? Okay, so cupping is, again, another of the instrument-assisted uh, suction uh, cupping uh, uh, submodalities in Chinese medicine. So in, in this case, we're going to use the uh, a pressure cupping gun. Um, in old times, we used to use uh, uh, fire cupping, and even today, it's it's a modern uh, a, this a is type of a treatment. This is for fire it's, cupping. Yes. So, what would you do with it? Um, we're going to have that demonstrated in a second. Okay. I would like to demonstrate first this one. Sure. So, we would prepare the area with the heating pad and some of these uh, uh, medicated oils, which would uh, open the pores. It would bring the blood to the surface. Uh, we would usually suction the area that we're going to treat, which will uh, uh, bring the uh, blood. Uh, and the muscle tissue up, and uh, and then we would leave sometimes the cup there to for uh, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on on, uh, on indication. And this would be what we call a static cupping. It will be a number of static uh, cups um, uh, moved over the back. And when time is right, we would just uh, gently release this, which brings us to the rings and and the bruising. Does she have a ring? I can't see. Um, she has a no. little bit. Um, and then depending on the color of the bruise, uh, it would be used diagnostically to diagnose how much of stagnation we have in the blood and chi. Oh, for if the blood was purple versus uh, bright red? And then we also have something called moving cupping that uh, yeah. Lee is going to demonstrate on me uh, in, in terms of the fire cupping. My favorite, favorite technique. <laughs> Anytime you wake up and, and sometimes I, I end up having to cup myself and you, you often wake up with a stiff neck and you can't really turn and it's difficult to drive and look over your blind spot. Mm -hmm. So I quickly go into the treatment room and I'll, I'll start using the fire cupping with the running cupping. So traditionally we would have a, a heating element whether it's a candle and so forth and this is soaked in 99% alcohol and you would uh, allow it to burn with the flame going to insert into the cup and then quickly it's going to attach to the area that's already being prepped with oil and heat and so forth and what I normally like to do is move the cup around the channel and along the channel and just help draw out the specific um, 
area that is being targeted because most of the time what's happening is the fascia is being stuck or the muscles is very taut and tight and therefore it's not allowed to move. So having doing this for a few minutes, it gets really red, really purple. Oftentimes it's due to stagnation. The cup stays on the particular skin itself as you're dragging it along the skin. It's not the most comfortable feeling, but very effective treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, you will often be left with quite a lot of discoloration, and most people will think that you, you were in a bar fight of some sort. But it often but does it goes go away. away. It often does, I, yes. I was reading in uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, celebrity, uh, back in 2004. She was uh, at a movie premiere in New York, and she was wearing a low-cut shirt, so her back had these circles on it. And um, so it was from the, the cupping. And right. what was interesting about some of the articles is that they said that the cupping is also used for detox. How does that work? It, it, it is because what it does, it brings uh, what we call um, acidotic blood, that it's a deeper inner tissue, it brings it to the surface. And occasionally once uh, we have a first pass when we cup in and skin turns red, then they would do a bit of a bleeding cupping. So they would make a small incision, they would put a cup over it and suction it. Uh, generally about 10 drops of blood, which brings all this uh, toxin full blood. So it's almost like a, um, a bleeding therapies we used to have in, in the Western biomedicine. So it sounds like all these treatments from Twina to Gua Sha um, to the cupping really helps to um, not only move the blood and chi, but really bring the blood to the surface of the body and to, I guess, expel the pathogen, is that? Yes, the um, idea is to bring the deeper seated uh, blood with, uh, with the pathogens to the surface so it's dealt better and uh, that also releases the tension in the muscles, relaxes the person and increases overall wellness. Wow, that was wonderful. Hey, you guys, thank you so much thank for uh, being here and educating us and our viewers on traditional Chinese medicine and um, come back. Anytime, anytime. I uh, want to leave you with the words by Yeshi Dundon, uh, physician to the Dalai Lama, who said, health is the proper relationship between the microcosm, man and woman, and the macrocosm, the universe. Disease is a disruption of that relationship. In other words, know your healthy place in the cosmos. I'll see you next week. Have a fabulous evening.